what's going on guys so usually i do not respond and make you know response videos to videos people have made about me on youtube because you know it really doesn't matter what people say or what people do we're all going to have to stand before god and give an account for the things that we teach and preach and the way that we live um you know everybody's arguing who's right who's false who's a who's a real teacher who's a false teacher god knows and i tell people just pray about everything pray about this video don't take my word for it don't take their word for it study for yourself seek god for yourself now with that being said uh i've talked to alan parr a couple times so this is different he told me look I, I made this video about you i'm just letting you know about the mike todd stuff that you were talking about referencing speaking in tongues first thing i asked him i, I said do you speak in tongues he said no i and i already knew he was going to say no because usually when people take this stance all right you if you talk to them you'll see they've never spoken tongues before so that's number one and so because i know there might be some individuals that are going to come to this video um and you haven't heard what i have to say about it i'm just going to give you my stance real quick now i believe this one verse shuts down everything that they're talking about people like to use that verse in corinthians about the gift of tongues and they take it out of context jude 120 says but ye beloved building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. I feel that shuts down everything that they're going to they're going to say that they're going to argue because the Bible cannot contradict itself, all right? So if there is a contradiction it's because you're interpreting something wrong. So Jude 120, right? It says praying in the Holy Ghost. All right, I'm going to read these next two verses very quickly. Mark 16, 17, 18. You guys heard me say it over and over again. And these signs shall follow them that believe. And my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Notice it says these signs shall follow them that believe. It doesn't say a special group of believers. It doesn't say like, oh, only some of you are going to do it. It says if you believe, you can cast out devils. You can speak with new tongues. It says you shall. All right, it's clear. There's no arguing with that. You can't twist that. I don't see how anybody could misunderstand that. Some people say, well, you're not taking up serpents and, you, you know, stuff like that. But usually when the Bible is talking about serpents and scorpions, it's more of a reference of spiritual warfare. All right. Now let's go back to Jude 120. But ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost. Let's go to Acts 19, 2 through 30. Paul, right? He shows up uh, to see some uh, believers. He said unto them, have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, we have not so much heard as whether there be a Holy Ghost. Notice Paul did not approach them saying only some of you are going to speak in tongues. He went to them preaching the same message. People, people say, brother Marcus, you're a false teacher with the speaking in tongues stuff. I'm preaching two verses in particular, right? Mark uh, 16, 17 through 18 and Acts 2, 38, which I'm going to read in a second. But he went to them and asked them, have you received the Holy Ghost? Why would he do that? And not, not, not only did he ask them, watch what happens. They said, we don't know if there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, until what then were you baptized? They said unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John very baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him, which should come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, watch, the Holy Ghost came on them and they spake with tongues and prophesied. So they were believers already. And Paul says, hey, I need to ask you something. I know you guys believe and that's cool, but have ye received the Holy Ghost? And then he put his hands on them. They got the Holy Ghost. They spoke in tongues. So then we go back and we look at Jude. It says praying in the Holy Ghost. What does that mean to pray in the Holy Ghost? I'm going to read Acts 2.38 before we break that down. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, I'm not going to get into the subject of water baptism, but I'm going to point out something right here. It says, repent. That's one action. I had to repent. It says to be baptized. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. All right. I had to be baptized. That's two actions. Then it says, ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's three separate actions. So there was a repentance. There was a water baptism. And then you received the gift of the Holy Ghost. This message, people are saying, Brother Marcus, you're a false teacher. 
I'm preaching what Peter preached. I'm telling you that if you repent and you're baptized in the name of Jesus, ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. People saying, Brother Marcus, you're a false teacher. I'm preaching what Mark 16, 17, 18 says. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. So in all of these right here, it says, ye shall speak with new tongues. Ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It doesn't say a certain small individual group are the only ones who can speak in tongues. That's why I'm trying to get people to understand the only go-to verse they have is Corinthians. You're taking it out of context. All right. And, and the thing that you'll notice is usually when they're taking it out of context, you ask them, have you ever spoken tongues? They'll say no. And that's why they take that stance. All right. And I'm not saying this to bash anybody. I'm not saying this to look down on anybody or think, oh, we're better because we speak a tongue. None of that stuff. I'm just showing you what the Bible says. And you don't have to feel bad if you haven't spoken in tongues yet, which is usually why, uh, Folks get defensive about this. Usually the people you see defending this are the ones who haven't spoke in tongues. All right. John 7, 38. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Now, the reason why I bring up this verse is to I, I try to explain to people. People try to overthink it when, you know, they're praying for the Holy Spirit. And that's usually why they can't receive it, because notice it says, these signs shall follow them that believe. You've got to believe. If I'm thinking, man, this is crazy, this is stupid, you know, and I talk myself out of it, I'm not believing. And so the way that I explain it to people, the Holy Spirit, one of the fruits of the uh, Spirit is self-control. Um, the Holy Spirit's not going to just take your tongue and start slapping it around. You have to surrender, okay, to it. And it's just like if you was in the world and you got mad, right? And you, you felt like your flesh just rising up almost from your belly. You wanted to say the F word. You just felt it like you wanted to say it. You surrendered your tongue to say that feeling that you felt rising up. You surrendered your tongue and you released it. It's the same thing with speaking in tongues. You're going to feel the spirit come on you and you just have to, in faith, just release it. Now watch this in Romans 8, 26, 39. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth with our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for. So I can pray and I could talk to God and that's all cool, but I'm praying with my own understanding. I'm praying with my own intellect. I'm praying with my own desires. The spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered, uttered. The spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the spirit is interceding on your behalf. It's beautiful and powerful to pray in tongues. And it's not something that, oh, it's just for these group of people, like how they try to, uh, people try to take Corinthians out of context. Because when we go back, all right, to Jude, it says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. That's not just the people with the gift of tongues. And I'm going to explain that in a minute. All right. Um, I, and I think that's good enough. I, I don't I don't see how anybody can really argue with these verses. Paul goes to some believers and he says, it's cool. You're believers. But have you received the Holy Ghost? I asked uh, uh, Brother Alan Parr I said, you know, um, have you ever spoken in tongues? He said, no. Paul does what? He lays hands on them after he baptizes them. The Holy Ghost comes on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now in Corinthians, right? The verse that people want to use, the gift of tongues. If you've ever been in, in you know, I mean, a lot of churches do this nowadays, but pretty much what happens is the spirit will give you a download and people will release it in tongues. And so what will happen is somebody will interpret it. The spirit will give them the interpretation. It's the same way as when you read the Bible, right? And the spirit is leading you and guiding you into all truth. And the spirit is giving you revelation, right? You, I've seen this happen many times. Somebody will, and you know when it's happening because it's different. It's not like this intercessory prayer, which he's talking about where the spirit is interceding on your behalf. It's like a message comes in the spirit from God. They release it in tongues and then somebody releases it. And this happens in the church. He says, if there's no interpreters, just be silent. And so that's a whole different thing. The gift of tongues. And then what happened here, the Holy Ghost came upon them and they spake with tongues and prophesied, which is the same thing that we see in Acts 2.38. Uh, and I believe there's even another one um, that you, you, and you can look this up for yourself. Like this is why I tell people to study the word for yourself. But you see, when they received the Holy Ghost, they spoke in tongues. That was just the evidence that the Holy Ghost had went on them. And so here's the bottom line. Look, people said, Brother Marcus is, 
false teacher, false preacher. Most of the people who are saying that, they haven't spoken tongues, right? And this is all I'm saying is I'm preaching what Mark says. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. I'm preaching what Acts 2.38 says. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remissions of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Are you really believing that? Or have you have you allowed somebody to teach you that you don't need it? Probably that's why you haven't received it. Because you, you've allowed somebody to teach you false teaching that, oh, you don't need to speak in tongues. Think about that for a second. If your mind is already, oh, I don't need it. That can't be faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. So I hear the word of God, right? I'm reading these scriptures. Right? It says, these signs shall follow them that believe. How can you argue with that? If you're a believer, these signs shall follow you. And if they're not following you, it's because there's something wrong with the belief system. I don't see, like I said, everybody always runs to Corinthians. They use that, that chapter out of context because you cannot argue with this. It's clear as day. But that's why I say just pray about it. If you think that I'm absolutely wrong and you say, man, you're a false teacher, you're a false preacher, just pray about it. Just ask God, you know what? I don't like Brother Marcus. I don't like, I, or you might even call me Brother Marcus. I don't like that dude. I don't like his face. I don't like what he teach. I feel like, you know, uh, he's a false teacher. He's a false this. But let me just pray, you know, Lord, show me. That's, that's all I would ask you to do. Say, Lord, just lead me and guide me into all truth. If I haven't spoken tongues and this is possible for me to do, why wouldn't you want it? Why wouldn't you? After reading all of this, why wouldn't you want it? If you can have it, if Peter says that the promise is unto you and your children and to all that are far, it's a promise. You can have it. He doesn't say for the promises unto you and not you. It's, it's only for a certain group. Peter says the promise is unto you and your children and to all that are. It's so crystal clear. It's crystal clear. Pray about it. All right. Now, you, I'm going to say you're going to have to be humble. You got to you're going to have to humble yourself because if you come you know, to this video with, with pride and you just come and you just think, man, I'm right, I'm right, he's wrong, he's wrong, then you're just not going to be able to receive it. Read these scriptures, especially Acts 19, and just pray about it because Paul, right, is the same one that they, when they run to Corinthians, but here he's going, he said, hey, you guys believe, but have you ever, uh, you know, been baptized in Jesus' name? Have you ever received the gift of the Holy Ghost? They didn't even know what he's talking about. And he said, okay, we got to do something about that. That's why I'm doing this video, and that's why I'm preaching the things that I'm preaching. You can have it if you want it, and that's all I'm saying. Hey, much love to Brother Alan Parr. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep pressing in the kingdom. Uh, you, like I said, I usually don't make these kind of videos responding, um, but I just felt like, hey, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and, and give this word out here, and whoever receives it, they receive it. Whoever doesn't want to receive it, think, think about it this way. You think I'm a false teacher or a false preacher. I'm telling people if they want the Holy Ghost, they can have it. If they want to speak in tongues, they can Think, think about that for a second. That's all I'm teaching right now. What is what is the bad thing about teaching that? The only argument somebody's going to come with is, well, I've never spoken tongues. And so now it makes me feel bad. Or you make me feel like I'm going to hell because I didn't speak in tongues. I, I, these are not the things that I said in this video. I said, if you want it, you can have it. Something to think about. Love you guys. Be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus' name.